Drawing and painting with a mouse is not a great experience, and using traditional mediums to create can take up a lot of space. In 2022, it's more affordable than ever to ditch the mouse and pencil altogether and go full stylus. Let's break it down. Welcome back. In this video, we'll be going over the difference between graphic tablets and pen displays. The major difference is a solid one, but can still get confusing when multiple names are used for either type of accessory. So for clarification, I'll be referring to all tablets with no displays as graphic tablets, and all tablets with screens as pen displays. When you're getting ready to upgrade your setup, which is better? If this video helps you make your decision, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to see more content like this. Plus, check out the description for links to some popular stylus-based accessories and links to some other videos that might help you with your choice. First, there are a lot of features the pen displays and graphic tablets have in common, like support for a range of pressure sensitivity and tilt support, which can make the stylus perform like real brushes, pencils, or other tools when using compatible software. Almost all graphic tablets have a drawing surface made to simulate the feel of real paper. Pen displays often do too, but not all, like iPads, although you can buy screen protectors that keep your display safe from scratches and cracking that also mimic a paper-like feel. The best part of making the switch? Think of all the paper you'll save with a digital canvas at hand. The eco-friendly aspect of these tools is a huge plus for multiple types of professionals and hobbyists who may be running out of space to store more papers and canvases anyway. There are a handful of differences between graphic tablets and pen displays too, the biggest being obvious. One has a built-in monitor and one does not. The lack of screen on graphic tablets means a few things. The first being that they can never be used without a separate screen hooked up to your computer. It also means the tablets are lighter and more durable, so paired with a compatible laptop, they can be pretty portable for use on the go. The lack of display means that artists and designers need to split their attention. While your hand works on the tablets, your eyes need to be elsewhere on your monitor, which means a steep learning curve is necessary while training yourself not to look at the drawing surface as you would with a pen and paper. However, these tablets have existed for a long time and are faithfully used by tons of professionals like architects, graphic designers, engineers, and more. There's a huge range of buying options in different sizes and price points with or without programmable hotkeys, and in general, they're much cheaper than the majority of pen displays. Don't let the price be your biggest choice factor though. The money can make a huge difference in accessibility for people with lower budgets, but pen displays have a lot of benefits. Of course, looking where you're working with the stylus makes the learning curve much easier. If you're already an artist, the most work comes from figuring out how to use art and editing software, not how to use your display. The versatility of our graphics tablets is shown in that they can be used alone with your computer or with a regular monitor if you're going for a dual or triple screen setup, which can be beneficial if you want to use your entire pen display as a canvas and another monitor for references, or when recording your art and design process with something like OBS, not having both windows open on the same screen can simplify things. Some pen displays are designed as standalone units, which don't even require a computer at all, like the Huey on Canvas Studio 22 or iPads, although most of what I'm talking about today applies primarily to displays that do need a computer, and I'll get more into the benefits of standalone tablets in a future video. A handful of pen displays are known to overheat during long periods of use, which for some people may not be a problem, but for those of us who are doing long days, this means discomfort to the hands while working on a hot screen, and can even potentially cause hardware damage if the display isn't given a break now and then. Unlike many graphic tablets, most pen displays are compatible with third-party styluses, meaning more options for users to get a stylus that fits comfortably in their hand, or one that has its own hotkeys which can be set to trigger keyboard shortcuts or mouse buttons. Although the styluses that come standard with newer models of pen displays and graphic tablets usually have some sort of ergonomic design and one or two hotkeys. Pen displays generally require multiple cables to function, including one to your computer and one for power, though some require even more. Alternatively, graphic tablets almost all need a single cord, a simple USB plug-in to connect to the computer. This fact alone means graphic tablets win out on portability, since you don't need an outlet to use it with a laptop that's fully charged. That, added to the fact that graphic tablets tend to be more durable, means they can essentially be brought anywhere and used at any time. Graphic tablets' lack of display also means a generally longer lifespan, about 10 years versus the 5 years you're most likely to get from a pen display. That shorter lifespan for pen displays is due to eventual screen degradation from years of stylus pressure, and could be a lot less than 5 years if you're very heavy-handed. 
This is an area where, if you're going with a pen display, investing a little more money can really be important. Some displays are made with ultra-strong glass on the drawing surface, which may extend the life of the display much longer. So which tool is right for you and your computer setup? When it comes to durability and portability, graphic tablets win with a single core to function and hardier working surfaces that last almost twice as long as pen displays. They also win in the price category with tons of options under $100. However, the versatility of pen displays comes out on top since they can be used as a primary monitor, have wider support for non-standard styluses, and take almost zero time to learn, making that extra investment possibly worth a lot more than money. The most important considerations are your budget and how you plan to use the tool in your day-to-day -day life. If you're considering a pen display, check out our videos that are linked in the description on the Huey on Canvas Pro 16 and Canvas Pro 24, both of which we use here in the studio, and make sure to thumb this one up and subscribe to the channel so you can see more useful comparisons, tutorials, and reviews. What do you want to see in future videos? Drop down into the comments and tell me what you want to hear. And of course, until next time, take care of yourself and each other.